Hi there, my name is Rachel and this is the information session for the indoor cycling workshop called The Art of Creating Indoor Cycling Drills and Playlists. And the reason I want to do this is because I've had a lot of questions about the workshop and people are curious about it, which is really exciting. But I wanted to do a run through so that people who would like to take this course have a really good idea of what it's about and then also get to know me in the process. So my name is Rachel. I have been certifying indoor cycling instructor since 2004 and I've been teaching indoor cycling since the late 2000s. And uh, uh, indoor cycling is still one of my passions, although I'm at my studio right now and I teach a whole bunch of different types of classes, um, but I still love spinning and that's why I teach these workshop. Um, the reason I actually decided to create this workshop in particular, and we run it a couple times now and it's been a big success, is because I know a lot of instructors when they first get certified, um, they learn the basics, which is great. Um, but what happens is they don't feel confident teaching because they really struggle with creating drills, they struggle with the songs, or they get bored, or they're not sure how to really create a playlist. Um, queuing tends to be a struggle. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to spend a lot of time with you one-on-one -on -one and with your groups in order to help you really feel successful as an indoor cycling instructor, build your confidence up so that you go into your teach teaching your classes and you're really excited to teach. because. I know when I first started years ago, I got certified through Reebok and Schwinn and Kaiser and spinning, and I still struggled. I still learned all these different styles of teaching, but I just, I really just wanted some ideas when I was um, creating my drills. So that's really where this is going to be going, um, and I'm here to support you through the entire journey. And a lot of people, what they found is the group that they get to join in with is they really helped each other grow as instructors, and then you get to meet peers from all over the world. So that's what I think is really cool about this workshop. So what I want to do is I want to go through the workshop, break it down a bit, and then I know this is a recording, but if you want to send me any questions, feel free to send me a question at indoorcyclingideas at gmail.com or just reply to the email where you got this recording at. So anyways, I'm going to go through this and then, of course, write down any questions and send them to me. I'm happy to help you. So I'm just going to screen share for a quick sec and we're going to head over here. So what I want to do is I want to just really break this down for each of you. Um, so this is all about how to create drills, how to cue, and how to create playlists. At the end of this, we're going to talk about the live workshop piece, but this is going to be a week-to-week -week course. I'm, I take the material and I really wanted to break it down so it's simple and I don't want to overwhelm everybody. So you do have access to this really cool dashboard and everything you're going to learn is going to be in one place that you'll have access to for a very long time. So don't feel like you need to be stressed out about this process. That's why um, online is actually a really cool thing that we get to do now. So. Um, so I'm going to break down the workshops, but I'm going to start with our introduction. So the very first day um, that we get together, which is going to be on Tuesday, March 22nd, um, there will be a recording of that first live session if you can't make it, and that's okay. It's going to be a way to just meet everybody. We're not going to be on the bikes. We're just going to be having a Zoom session, and I'm going to introduce what this the course is about and really help everybody um, learn about who you are as instructor, because that's the first thing we want to learn. Are who are you as a coach? Who are you as instructor? What value do you bring to these classes, and what value do you hope to bring to your classes? So we're going to really talk about that as our first piece. And then we're going to be moving into the modules. And each week, the modules are going to build upon each other. So we're going to start with the art of queuing. And then we're going to lead up all the way up into creating the drills. So it's really broken down in the easy to understand part and also so that you feel confident with the content that you guys are getting. The second piece that I personally love and I really looked forward to this with the last couple of times I've taught this course is that we get to have this weekly connection. So um, sometimes it'll be on Tuesday, sometimes it'll be on a Saturday. So I try to mix up the days so people can make it, but it allows us to just connect whether it's 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Sometimes, you know, we start to talk and we go on for a bit. Um, again, it will be recorded, but we talk about what we learned and then we talk about what's coming up and then it gives you a chance to spend time with me one on one and ask questions either in a group or have that personal time with me as well. Um, so the weekly sessions are fun, and again, because we have instructors coming from all over the world, it's really it's a really cool way just to connect with each other and learn from each other because what they do in one part of the world may be different from another part of the world, or what we do up in here in Canada, what we do down in the States. Uh, we had people from Australia, from England, from South Africa, from Germany in our last one, from Ireland. So it was a really cool experience just to meet and connect with instructors from different parts of the world. Um, the next piece is the Facebook group, and I use Facebook. It's a private group, so nobody knows who you're part of it. You can also have a fake profile and be part of it. Um, I use Facebook because it's easy, and it's easy to connect with each other in this group as opposed to people downloading apps. 
Um, the best part about this, like I said, because we have instructors coming in from all over the world, the Facebook group allows us to easily connect with each other regardless of our time zones. And then when we do our assignments, we're actually going to be doing our assignments um, with the Facebook group. So you actually get to connect with your um, peers and ask them for feedback, ask them for advice, um, and also give their, all be obviously going through your assignments as well, but it's really cool that you get to um, have different points of view in this experience. So the Facebook group is a big part of this. Um, so if you're not a Facebooker, it's okay. You can just create a face fake account and join in, but um, it's an easy way that we actually discovered in the last workshop that it worked really, really well with our group. So the first module is all about the art of queuing. And this one, I think, is a big one for a lot of people because when you first start teaching, we're not really taught how to queue. We're taught how to set up the bikes. We're taught about interval training. We're taught about um, bike biomechanics of the bikes, um, drills and that kind of thing. But we're, we don't spend a lot of time on queuing from any of the courses that I've taken. And I think I've taken probably every single one of them. So we really want to talk about how to queue. And then we really want to connect with, we want to bridge the queuing with the learning styles of your riders, which is really important because you have to learn how your riders perceive, perceive your information. So whether it's visual cues, auditory cues, um, intuitive cues, internal cues, external cues, we're gonna be going through all of it. Um, Nonverbal cues are a really big part of cueing as well. So we're gonna take that and break it down. So we're gonna talk about the three ingredients of a transformative cueing experience. We're gonna talk about the four styles of learning and perceived cueing. We're gonna talk about how to develop your style of cueing. I don't want people cueing to be like everybody else. I want you to embrace your style and bring that to your classrooms. Um, there's so many different styles of cueing as well. There's different categories that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about what, how, why, and where to cue, which is really important in your classes. We're gonna create a roadmap for cueing, and then we're also gonna talk about cueing to the music, which is gonna bridge module one and module two together. So this is what creates that rider's experience. When you're cueing with the music, with the class, and creating the experience, it no longer becomes just a class, it actually becomes an experience for your riders. The second one we're building is module two. So this is talking about the music. Um, I have been to classes, I go to classes all the time, all over the city, and I sometimes find I go into a class and they just put music on as a background, and we don't wanna do that, or the music doesn't match the drill at all. And there's a lot to learn about music. And again, I think it's one of those things that, you know, it's undervalued in our cycling courses. We really miss that key component. And this is where the group exercise component um, comes into the indoor cycling world. So we want to talk about the tempo, the revolutions per minute, your beats per minute, the genre of music that you guys are choosing, the duration, beat drops, beat kick-ins, how well that song matches that drill, and then bridge the gap between the beats per minute and the revolutions per minute. So how to cue to inspire and energize using music, and then really have an easy to use method for creating indoor cycling drills using songs that I think will save you a ton, a ton of time. Um, that was the feedback I got from the last group is that they said when they learn the method the way I do it, um, and they applied that, they actually saved a ton of time actually creating drills for their classes. So that, I know we all want to save time and enjoy time with our family and friends. So instead of getting overwhelmed and bogged down by creating playlists, this is a simple method that we can use. So we talk about how music affects the brain, and this is really big with our beat drops and our anti-drops. Um, the song versus the drill, so which do you plan first? Building a cycling library for your playlist. We actually do something that's really cool is we collaborate as our groups. So everybody who's in this session will be collaborating on a Spotify playlist and we get to add music into that. So that's a fun piece. Um, the 12 categories of music to match the styles of drills. And this will help you when you're creating your music library. No matter what app you want to use, you could use Apple, you can use Google, you can use Amazon, I use Spotify. You start to create categories and it actually makes teaching very simple. Um, the build up, the beat drops, the anti beat drops, which is becoming more popular, and then valence, which is that feeling of music. We talk about what mistakes to avoid in your classes with music. <laughs> and I'm sure people have been to classes where you're like, that song did not work well with that drill, and we're trying to avoid those types of things. The tempo, the 32 count, are really, really important. And then the beats per minute and the RPM. And then also, this is a bridging piece where we're going to take what we learned in module one and bridge it with the music, which is module two. The next module, this I, I know for a fact when I learned this method years ago, this actually made teaching drills super, super simple. So we really get in depth with um, Tudor Bompa's 
um, triangle of training and we take the triangle training and we apply it into indoor cycling. So we really start to learn how to create drills that really serve a purpose, which is creating a drill based on strength, creating a drill based on endurance, on speed, on power, on strength endurance, and speed endurance. So those six components, and then those six components, we work with the duration, the gears, and the RPM, like you can see in that triangle. Understanding the difference in each category will change the way instructors create drills. And I know for a fact this changed the way I create drills, but what was really cool about it is when you're creating timer drills or interval drills, they're not just 30 seconds for no reason. They really serve a purpose, which allows your playlist to flow in your classes and uh, you'll especially you'll notice those outdoor riders that really love certain types of intervals they're gonna they're gonna connect with this but this also makes planning classes really really easy as well so this is one thing we're talking about so we're gonna break down interval training we're gonna talk about aerobic versus anaerobic training and power max and threshold training how to create interval drills which is a really important piece so we're going to talk about that triangle like I just said in the last slide. We're going to really uh, dive into our cadence and our gears, how to create drills using the triangle, the, the triangle training, and also how to match the music with this type of training. So again, we've got one, module one, module two, module three now coming together, and this is where we want to hang out. And then module four, my favorite place to be. As most of you know that I write ebooks and I, I choreograph, um, this is big for me. So I do a lot in module three, but module four is taking um, everything we've learned now and we're gonna talk about those styles of drills. So we're gonna talk about choreograph-based drills, interactive drills, so you're connecting your community together, timer-based drills, ride profiles, adventures, and theme rides. So we're gonna take those six and break them down in depth so when you start creating drills, I'm going to teach you how to choreograph in the simplest way um, because I think what happens is people think that you need to like do dance on the bike to be doing choreographed drills and that's not the case. We use choreographed drills all the time and they, they end up feeling like interval drills but they match the music and that creates that magic in your classes when the music really works with a drill. Um, and this is also going to save you again, tons and tons of times prepping your classes when you apply module three and module four. This is where the magic happens, in my belief. So like I said, these are the six things we're gonna cover. We're gonna really dive deep into choreographed drills and how to do them. Interactive drills, um, they really do connect your riders together. That's what that creates, that community, and that is what will help you um, as you move forward. So. Sorry, my phone just went off, but I'm just gonna keep going. So um, then we have the interval timer drills, those ride profiles, adventure profiles, and those theme rides. So we're gonna go into depth in each one of those. Module five, we're bringing everything together. And this is where the fun part comes in. This is when we create our playlist. So we're talking about the flow from drill to drill to drill. We're talking about the, how the music's gonna flow in your class, how to take music from all different genres and put them together in one playlist so that you're connecting with multiple different types of riders in your classes because um, sometimes instructors get stuck in their genre and they don't move through it. So this is where we're gonna bring that music piece to it, but also planning our drills and planning these playlists. So once you plan a playlist, you save again even more time creating drills, right? So you don't have to spend hours and hours making playlists because you start having playlists ready to go and they become really easy. So um, this is where we want to finish off with, with this playlist piece. So once you've put all these modules together, it really starts to make sense. But we want to do this in a slow and consistent way so that we're, we're diving deep into each one so that you have this like really deep educational piece of, of it as a, as a fitness instructor and leader that's going to serve you for years to come and then um, also gets you excited about teaching again because I still love teaching. I've been teaching for over 20, 22 years now and I still get pumped. I just taught spin this morning so we had a great ride this morning, full class, lots of fun. So that's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to have that confidence teaching, come into your class, full classes, people love your class, they sign up because they can't wait to come to your class. That's what this course is going to be about, okay? So module five is really how to create a class experience versus just a regular class. The three key elements, which is inclusivity, immersing the riders, and then providing inspiration and motivation. I'm not talking about the cheese ball stuff. That's not what I mean when I talk about inspiration and motivation. I'm talking about are they walking out feeling good about themselves? That's what we're talking about. Um, how to create a playlist that flows from drill to drill. How to choose songs and drills for your playlist. How do you evaluate your own classes and then really how to organize your music is going to be that last, that last component. 
And then at the end of this course, when we're done, we're going to be doing a live ride workshop. So this allows us to come together as a group. Again, this will be recorded, so if it's at a random time that you can't make, that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do mini workshops and we're going to go through choreographed drills, interval drills, interactive drills, timer drills. We're going to put it all together so that not only do you leave with just the content of the course, you're walking away with tons of ideas. And then you're also going to get uh, my bundle, which is that has over 300 drills and songs. So again, I love to give as much information as I can for people who are engaged in, in participating in my workshop. So you will walk away with an abundance of ideas and that's easy but we're going to break it down so it's a fun way to do when it comes to your CECs I know I get this question a lot because some people are with AFFA they're with ACE they're with there's tons of different organizations so I am in a I am in Canada I am a Canadian company I work with a company called the BCRPA and I work with the Canadian Fitness Education Services and we also have CanFit Pro up here um, because I can't apply for every single organization from around the world, we are approved by the BCRPA, which does make generally um, getting your petition for your um, for your credits, it makes it easier because BCRPA is recognized, so is the CFES, um, but I cannot guarantee. I know a lot of people, we had a lot of people from the states actually take this course in particular um, that took a chance whether they could take the credits or not just because they really wanted the content. So that's a decision you're just going to have to make. Um, I would love to have you on board, but I do understand the CEC component of it. Um, we are approved for 16 educational hours with our organization. So, And if there's any information that your organization needs um, in order for me to submit it, I'm happy to do that for you as well. So just keep in mind that we, we may not be able to get the CECs from you, but the course has a lot of value that it brings, and that's what some people said. They said, you know, I, I didn't even try to apply because they just want to take the course, and then other people, they got approved with their organization, and they just submitted their certificate at the end. So once you're done the course, you'll get a, a certificate, um, and you'll finish all the assignments. It'll give you 16 CEC credits, and you'll be there ready to go. So that is part of it, and the BCRP logo will be on it, so you'll have that extra boost if you need it. And so I'm just going to leave it today and just say thank you for watching this. Thank you for sticking this out. Um, if you have any questions, again, please do send me questions. I would love to answer them. And I would really love to have you part of this course. Um, as you can tell, indoor cycling is something that I'm passionate about. But even more than that, I'm passionate about helping people really love teaching indoor cycling and I know when you first get started it is stressful and it's hard or maybe you took a break and it's been two years and you need some refresher and that's why I'm here so I hope I get the opportunity to work with you and uh, do this workshop with you and I can't wait to meet you so feel free to send me any messages and I hope you guys have a really great day